story of a nation's addiction and the ultra cheap labor that made it all possible. The Juan Valdez story. This title sequence brought to you by the illiterate. Compiled and edited by Billy Gans. Yeah. The A and P Coffee Division, keeping you awake since 1859. And by cooperation, they mean blackmail. I think this title sequence needs some coffee to get going. She'll never see that laxative coating in her mug. <laughs> we Americans know what we like. And Strippers we and beer. really do like coffee. Did I say like? I meant well, we physically use dependent. More than three billion pounds of coffee every year. And that's just Seattle. Where does it all come from? The land of Oz. From South America. So let's fly down and get the story firsthand. Second stories can have bed bugs. There's a typical plantation now. Where's Geraldo O'Hara? The great plantations of Ernest and Julio Valdez. What's with the hat box full of milk? Saigon. Shit. Many of the remote villages depend upon the plantations for their existence. Life is pretty much the same as it has been for generations. Spent trembling before their sadistic bean gods. On the Diablos of course, Coisa. each village has its own schoolhouse, and the standard of living is immeasurably higher with increased knowledge. Naturally, the education of its youngsters includes learning all about coffee at an early age. Poorly tailored children's suits by poverty. When you gotta go. They learn that coffee begins with a little plant or tree. These trees thrive best in rich red soil. But not in this. When transplanted from the nursery, they're about two years old. Set in shallow holes, eight to 14 feet apart, the tree must grow for another two or three years before bearing its first crop. Wait, this isn't coffee. Ken, do you have any zigzags? Yeah, I'm a tree, go what? Oh! Undead cameraman shadow monster! It's the polyphonic spree! Brazil alone has more than a million square miles of coffee country, an area larger than all the United States, east of the Mississippi. You know, the first important part. Is that supposed to be impressive? I need a few carafes of coffee to coax my consciousness from its current coma. This is a coffee blossom. Eight to nine months after this blooming, the coffee fruit ripens and looks very much like a cherry. I prefer experienced fruit. A disgusting, inedible cherry. Picked by skilled workers who know just when the ripe berry should be plucked, the average tree bears enough coffee beans to make about one pound of roasted coffee a year. Hardly seems worth it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Coffee comes from beans? No wonder I have atomic flatulence every day. Looks like it would be pretty painful to be hit with one of those branches. Get your thumb out the crate. Each plantation has its assembly points, where the day's pick is brought in to be weighed and bagged. This is just one step in more than 24 major operations required in bringing your cup of coffee to the table. Literal drug mules. Beast to burden my ass. <laughs> <laughs> they get to ride a flume. The berries must go through a crushing and washing process, which takes place on the plantation. Are they berries or beans? Quit jostling my beans. Mexican jumping beans. <laughs> crushing removes the protective red covering with which nature has enclosed each coffee bean. Should we be seeing this? Live nude beans! Then they are washed. Slip sliding away. The beans float while skin or pulp sinks to the bottom. I wish this film would sink to the bottom. Providing adequate water facilities on a tropical plantation is a necessary and costly requisite in producing high quality coffee. And virtually impossible, so they settle for this mud-filled creek water instead. Linda Blair must be back there. South American curling. Now encased only in its final hull, or parchment, the coffee beans are spread out to dry in the sun. Like American tourists. This takes from eight to 10 days. Torgo. Men must rake and turn the beans so that they all will dry evenly. Jorge, we need an invention to do this for us. You coffee beans, keep it down then, in there. packed in bags, the dried green coffee is ready to be sent into the city. No drugs or guns in here, just coffee, mm-hmm. I swear I'm not coffee. Don't make me get on the truck. 
Here it is unloaded at a warehouse, where it will be inspected, sorted, and graded for quality. Eventually the cocaine, er, I mean coffee, will be sent to Miami for distribution. This initial grading is one of the most important operations in the selection of coffee. Today, mechanical methods are so perfected that coffee is sorted by machines with great precision. Nothing more precise than a belt sander. Mr. Valdez, I don't like this ride. Holy shit, what is that? Signage by Mythbusters. Each bag, after it is stamped with its country of origin, name, grade, and destination, is ready to go to the seaport, where final tests are made before shipment to the United States. Because there are no other countries in the world in which coffee is exported to. He must have made the suits for those kids. Is your coffee upholstered? Oof. God! Using an instrument like an apple corer, a checker stabs each bag and withdraws a sample for testing. You can test my sample, but you can't stab my bag. Time for the white man to judge the brown man's handiwork. It's a pop-up Whole Foods. The A&P has its own coffee experts right on the spot to test and grade the contents of each bag to see that it meets the company's quality standards. None of it does. Samples are flown to the United States together with the experts' appraisals of grade and value. There's gold and then there beans. Hey, that thing has a key catcher. Wow, there sure are a lot of similarities in the terminology for smoking marijuana and the industrial production of coffee. Stinking baristas, always fixing the scales. Is that the face plate to a Marshall Plexi? Ah, close enough. It's good to know that construction paper is used. Why is he pouring that coffee into a hollowed out skull? Something must be stuck there. Testing also includes roasting samples of the green coffee and Leather. actually taste testing it for strength Leather. and flavor. Mmm, hibiscus. Oh no, the soundtrack's been over caffeinated. Today, many of the great cities of Latin America are made of coffee. have been built largely upon the business of exporting coffee, which is one of their most valuable commodities. Along with cocaine, human slaves, and oil. Why this pedestrian crossing is made of coffee. The people are modern, up-to-date, and eager to trade with their good neighbors to the north. Manifestos! Get your manifestos here! When the coffee crop is good, business is good. For coffee means the same to these people and their ability to buy the things they need as wheat to a farmer in Nebraska or corn to Iowa and Kansas. Or tobacco in West Virginia or tobacco in Kentucky or tobacco in Tennessee. Hey, it's International Coffee Headquarters. The United Abominations. I just know Godzilla's going to come raging out any minute. <laughs> it's a cell phone from the 80s. Uh, maybe Gamera will come save us. Mothra? I'll set it for any kaiju at this point. Even Zigra. How about King Kong or the 50-foot woman? I don't think we're gonna be so lucky. Music by Mary Melodies. The beautiful beaches of New Jersey. Cool. <clears throat> Welcome to sunny Honolulu, Hawaii. Enjoy our frozen cocktails, nude sunbathing, sandy beaches, and tons of other attractions also found all over the continental United States. While it's miles of beautiful beaches and modern cities lure thousands of people to Latin America, nothing intrigues the tourist more than a visit to the waterfront to watch the ships loading coffee for shipment to the United States. I drink, I drink my, my coffee, coffee with, with the forklift. forklift. Bags of okay, I mean coffee, are ready for export. No, this is definitely how I want to spend my vacation. Now a cargo of coffee is loaded aboard ship. With ship's the life is unfulfilling. you'd use in storing food in your home. With large you nets know, and some cranes. foods must be kept dry. A sudden drop in temperature upon leaving the tropics could cause dampness in the ship's hold. Yeah. This moisture could injure the coffee oh. unless the beans are carefully stowed. So, 
loading a cargo of coffee is also an important operation in getting this beverage on its way to you. Beverage. Some preparation may be required. Goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Get the hell out of here. New York, New Orleans, and San Francisco are the principal ports through which coffee arrives in the United States. But any port in storm will do. This seems like a private moment. Here, licensed graders spear each bag for fresh samples and taste test the shipment to make certain the coffee they've bought compares with the reports and samples from South America. Seen here, Alfred Hitchcock enjoying the latest brew. Seems a shame to dump it all into the bay. Based upon the findings of these experts, one coffee is mixed in the blending machine with another to produce the bouquet, the aroma, the flavor desired. This is where kids went before the Wonka factory opened. I ought to start a union. That'll show them. Maybe if I had in here, I could get a day off. What are we going to do with all of these barbecue grills? From blending machines, the green coffee is introduced next to huge automatically controlled roasting ovens. Hundreds of pounds at a time are consumed by overworked employees. Done to a turn, cascades of precisely roasted beans are released at just the right moment, ready to be freshly sealed into packages the very same day. Guaranteed to keep out evil. Huh, kinda looks like Cocoa Puffs. I hope it's that I Love Lucy sketch. In this way, you know the coffee you buy is fresh and ready to be custom ground just right what the, for the way you make coffee. Terribly. Wow, the acid's kicking in. That must be the new Sriracha flavor. Yes, we North Americans really do like coffee. More Earl Grey, dear? We drink around 120 billion cups a year. Per person? After all, drinking coffee is one of life's pleasures. My, what a, a pleasure pleasurable that sensation. Be duplicated by any other beverage. Well, except for maybe soda or beer, or fruit punch or beer, or juice or beer. Speaking of which, let's go grab a beer! Good night, Good night folks! One step in more than 24 major operations required in bringing your cup of coffee to the table.